Hello guys, it is of course me, Trollface the Man, and welcome back. This is a series where we're testing random things to see how they work as wood stains. Today we're going to be testing a batch of acrylic paints mixed with water and see how they stain both pine and oak. Same thing as the first time where you have these cut up where they're all one matching segment and then we have them marked on the back which we will write what type of thing we're using as the stain. In this case, uh, this is going to be silver. Oh, well, that's not great, okay. Well, I will mark them with a marker that actually works. Um, silver acrylic, gold acrylic, black, white, and pink. Um, not necessarily in that order. Oh, let's see, okay. All right, so. Yeah, um, just gonna set these over here so they don't get splashed. Now in this case, my silver acrylic has kind of like decomposed. You hear it, it's super watery. So I might just use this straight up. I don't know why, because I had another metallic uh, silver that ended up doing the same thing. It's like, it's not just separated. It's really, it's quite weird to be honest. Hopefully this will do something cool where it highlights the um, the grains, especially in the oak. Um, but we will have to see about that. As a silvery color. It's kind of more of a steely color, but it's supposed to be sterling silver. So I'm going to take that and start with the pine. I'm just going to apply it over the surface. I'm going to let that sit on for just a second while I also apply it to the oak here. Trying not to splash it everywhere. Use another cloth and just try and wipe that off. It is already Looking kind of interesting. Definitely did highlight the grain in there. So the same for the oak now. Actually seems like it might have done better with the pine than the oak, to be honest. We are getting some like gray sort of metallic-y highlights. Now I will be doing three layers of this. My hands are definitely metallic-y. Three layers of this. Um, but we're gonna do it in steps. So I have done this, let's now move to the next one, which I think is going to be about the white acrylic and we'll see how the white acrylic ends up doing. So we can already see the difference between the uh, acrylic treated pine and the acrylic treated um, oak and not. So these are going to be, huh, not, get it? Um, these are going to be set off to the side and we are going to do these ones. And each coat, I'm gonna wait four hours in between to give it sufficient time in order to, uh, to dry before the next application. So for this, I'm just going to use some white. It's fairly watery, but it's not super watery. So I'm going to mix it with about maybe 50% water just to kinda Allow it to go in better. The same process, we're gonna take a rag, we're gonna dip it in here, we're gonna just wipe that on. Put it on the sides too, like so. A little bit more on here. I'm gonna do the oak now too. I like the idea of these types of stains being made from the acrylic paint because theoretically, unlike some natural stains, they should retain their color pretty much indefinitely unless maybe put out in the sun or something where the color can uh, be lost due to like natural degradation. Dry cloth, I'm gonna take this and, ooh, that actually took the white on. I mean, it might look like it almost did nothing, but I can see in person it is like looking a fair bit brighter. 
it's actually kind of weird. Um, I have to show it next to the other piece, but it looks like it's a fair bit brighter and it will probably brighten up a little bit as it dries. Same thing with here, I'm going to take this and just kind of wipe it away. And we've lost almost like the, all the darkness from the, um, the oak grain there as the paint has went in there and kind of filled it in. So, as you can see right here, uh, this is the first layer of white on the pine. And right here is the first layer of white on the oak. You can see that the oak has lost pretty much all of its darker grains. And the pine, this actually looks lighter in person in a different way. It's more of a yellowish white. Well, this looks more like a white white in person. Um, but yeah, these, these are actually, it's, it's dark, it's clear, clear difference. And uh, we're gonna do the three more coats afterwards and I'm sure that will further sort of show a contrast uh, next, we are going to do uh, the bright pink, and I'm going to do the same thing with that where I uh, water it down 50% and then I apply it to there and we'll see how that looks. We got the uh, pink mixed up now that it almost looks like uh, Pepnobismuth or Pepnobismol or whatever, uh, except for maybe a little bit brighter. Uh, that was very thick paint actually, so it's a fairly strong pigment. So same process as before, very strong pink color. So I mean, these are things that I myself would probably never put on wood because I probably never would want my wood to look pink. But um, then again, pink wood is healthy wood. I should probably cut that out of the video. Um, but I mean, there is uh, there's definitely potentially applications for people that are not me. Well, that is a healthy amount of pink on there. And I'm gonna just wipe it off. And once again, with the pine, we're actually getting fairly good highlights, I would say, of the colors. Um, they're looking kind of interesting there. Especially like here. At, uh, Okay, well, let's see about the oak. So not surprisingly, once again, we have the oak picking up the pink, mostly in the grains. Which does look kind of cool, to be honest. As those highlights like right there in the grain, which has a very interesting effect. I could see this for a lot of different colors of paint actually uh, being utilizable. And I will probably do videos in the future where I test out some more uh, different colors of acrylics, except for just these ones, and, and see. Um, yeah, that is looking fairly interesting. So next, I think I'm going to do black, and then finally we are going to do gold. This is the pine with the uh, pink acrylic paint versus the untreated pine. There's a quite a stark contrast difference here. And then we have, of course, the treated oak with the untreated oak. And we can see that the pink had very much highlighted the grain as we would expect. So now we're going to move on to black paint, which I'm actually very much looking forward to this because I think it's going to have some very interesting results. We have the black mixed up. This black is almost like a brownish black if you look at it very very closely it's um i mean for the most part it looks black but you can tell it just has like the slightest hint of brown in it I'm curious how this is going to to work out yeah i don't know if you guys can see that on camera see it the brownish color mm-hmm It's almost kind of like a charcoal black, but like, like, I don't know, because there's, you can sometimes get a little bit of brown with uh, charcoal. So I don't know if charcoal black is supposed to be a pure black or if it's supposed to be like a more brownie black, but I do know that I've definitely seeing charcoal with hints of brown in it. Just like we found out with the ink pens though, um, usually blacks aren't actually black. They're just a really, really super strong uh, pigment of some other color. So in the case of this, like pin pens and stuff, it's usually like a dark purple or dark blue. In this case, it might just be a super dark brown.
That is an interesting effect, no doubt about it. it kind of looks like it's been burned a little bit or something. I don't know. All right, let's see how this oak turns out. Ooh, geez. Huh. That is unexpected. Like a lot of the other colors, the oak 100% took on this black super dark, and it almost looks like a really dark stained. Um, Jeez. I don't know if you guys could hear that. That was a dog fart. Uh, it looks, this looks really nice. Like I am, that looks really, really nice to be honest. That is very unexpected. That is cool. So yeah, let me just say, wow. Because, wow. Like even this, just with one coat, is looking awesome. Probably doesn't need three coats. We're gonna do three coats because that's what I do here. This too has a very unique kind of look that I could definitely see um, being utilized, but like, wow. So final one, we're going to do the Inca Gold. Um, metallic acrylic paint, same thing, dilute it with water and then put it on. Here is the Inca Gold mixed up. I know it seems very light, but I know it does dark, dry significantly darker. I don't know how that's going to translate to the wood though. Same process, just basically mixed it with 50% water and we're going to wipe it on and see what might happen. Pigment doesn't seem super strong in this paint particularly. It's kind of fairly light. So I might have actually wanted to go a little bit uh, thicker with it, but everything in hindsight has a slight golden sheen. I think it would be hard to see on the um, on this pine because of how light the pine actually is. I'm having higher hopes for the oak here. Once again, you can see how thin it is compared to some of the other, and I've used the same amount of water, it's just that it doesn't seem to have a huge amount of pigment in it. I'm hoping to get like some of that golden -y shimmer inside of the, uh, the grains. Just gonna wipe it off. I'm not seeing a whole lot of effect on here. I can see a very slight gold like sort of tracers in the um, the grains, but that's for the most part it. For the next coat, I might need to actually maybe put it on a little bit thicker by adding some more paint back into the, uh, the stuff there that I have. Yeah, I'm not seeing a whole lot from this either. There are, I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera, there are like little golden speckles inside of the grains, but it's just not super pronounced. It's like something you can look close at and see, but just not super, super pronounced. I'm gonna actually put it on a little bit thicker right now, just in an uh, aspect of wanting it to stay fair as possible. So I'm going to mix this up a little bit thicker and then reapply. Uh, goodbye all my Inca gold paint. I will miss the... This is actually probably about three parts paint to one part water. So it's, it's much, much, much more concentrated. Except for excluding this one, which somehow, like I said, just kind of became water itself, which was 100% concentration of paint, but it was really thin. So that was the first one we did with the silver. So let's try this again. So because it's already wet, it actually will not absorb in nearly as well, which is why I'm not gonna count this as a coat. We want to see an effect here, right? So this is how it's going to be. I should have had that thing below me because I'm just getting paint all over my table. Hmm. The effect is definitely a little bit stronger now. I'm getting some glittering inside of the 
actual wood itself and not just the wood grain. Uh, once again, hard to say, say how much it's going to show up on camera, but I can see it in person. Hopefully the effect will be better too when we get like multiple coats. And hopefully the gold color will be a little bit more pronounced too when it dries, because that's one thing I noticed about this paint is that it's a lot more pale at first and then becomes a lot more pronounced um, as the drying process continues. So once again, a very slight sparkle, but that's about it. A little bit disappointing compared to every other one that has done what I would say immensely better so far. Okay, so this is our lineup after the, uh, the first coat. We have our untreated pine, our untreated oak. Then we have uh, silver, white, pink, black, and then the gold. Uh, we can see a little tiny bit of shimmer in the, the gold side. And you can see that it's kind of taken on a slight yellow appearance compared to the untreated, but it's not a super pronounced effect yet. The metallic silver one definitely is a lot more pronounced and the white has a little bit of pink on it. <laughs> Um, but the black, still this black, is is very, very cool to me. Um, so we will tune back in after we got the three coats on. And meanwhile, I will take some, uh, some photographs in between the coats so we can see how much of a, a difference there might be at the end of it. Is there any ones so far that you guys think are cool? If so, leave them in the comments below. I'm just going to store these. Got some water here for moisture, and then I'm going to... Put this cake uh, thing that I found in the trash actually yesterday over there to kind of keep those from drying out in between applications. So I'm about to polyurethane these, but I figured I would give you a look at the edges here. Again, we have the silver, white, pink, Black, gold, and then untreated. This is the pine. Um, and then, again, silver, white, pink, black, gold, untreated uh, in the oak. And even though if the gold didn't show up very well on the pine face, you can see a little bit of a shimmer, pine face or the uh, oak face, I'm actually, I think it looks really cool on the side, if you see. Sometimes things don't show up as well on camera, but it has like a really cool golden uh, sparkly effect. They could make a cut of wood that has the um, has the green showing like that. Uh, potentially pretty cool looking. And again, on the face, it doesn't doesn't show up very well. So I'm going to polyurethane all of these and see what they end up looking like. Just one last look at the pieces before they get polyurethaned. Okay, so here we have the completed samples, and the results are definitely interesting without a doubt. Of course, this is untreated pine, untreated oak, and then silver, white, pink, black, and then the Inca gold. Um, most of the stuff is pretty self-explanatory. We have the, you know, respective colors of white, pink, and black looking about how you would expect, excluding the pink on the oak, which looks a lot more red, which is probably just because it's uh, it was applied over a darker green, so it made it look more red. What's interesting is that the white almost like inverted the look of the grains because it went into the darker areas and colored the darker areas more white while not touching the lighter areas on the oak. So you kind of have like this almost inverted uh, reaction to it, which is, is interesting. But uh, one of the things that surprised me is the silver, which looked very promising at first for both the um, oak and the pine. It lost a lot of the stuff that made it look so cool. The silver looked super, super speckly, shiny. 
uh, before it was polyurethaned. I'm trying to hit it with a flashlight in an angle so that way you can see. And then after it was polyurethane, that all went away. On the other hand, though, interestingly enough, the gold, which had almost no sparkly shininess before polyurethaning, had managed to gain a bunch. So you can see that the gold after the polyurethane had picked up a ton of like sparkly shininess, both the pine like just shown and the oak even more so. Look at how beautiful the oak is. Just, just a ton of that shimmering and sparkling. And then again, if we look at the, uh, the silver here, it's almost gone a dull gray. And I've had this problem before with silver paints and trying to polyurethaning. I don't know why, but they seem to always just kind of go a dull gray. But yes, uh, anyways, uh, white, pink, black, and of course the white on the oak the pink on the oak, and then the black, which again, the black on the oak looks really good to be perfectly honest. I like that brown color though. After three applications, it has become really, really dark. I think after the one application was kind of like the magic number on that. But overall, a very interesting test. I'm glad to have gotten a chance to uh, to see this one through, and I think the results are interesting and speak for themselves. Remember, if you like this video, if you found it useful, uh, please leave a like. If you have any comments for suggestions on what I should try next, uh, please leave those comments below. If you have friends that do woodworking and that might be interested in these videos, please remember to share it with them because if it helps you, it might help them and it definitely helps the channel uh, grow. So I appreciate that very much. And yeah, thank you to my awesome patrons for your support and help with funding videos. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you guys very much for watching and bye.